Let's take a look at bodies in SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametric. And in this video, I'm going to start things a little bit differently. Rather than starting in SOLIDWORKS, here I am in Pro Engineer, Wildfire 5.0 to be specific. This came out 12 years ago, and this is the oldest version of Pro Engineer that I can still run in Windows 10. And I just want to show you historically how Pro Engineer, now Creo Parametric, behaved prior to Creo Parametric 7.0. Here I have a simple part model. If you take a look, I have a sketch that consists of two squares that are not connected. With that sketch selected, I will go to the Extrude tool, and here we can change the depth of the feature. I will change it to a value of 50. Then I can hit the check mark on the dashboard and we have the part created there's no such thing as a body or different bodies in pro engineer or up to creo parametric 6.0 you could create geometry that was disjointed that was separate that was not connected and that was perfectly fine let's take a look at a second example i'm going to jump over to another part model here I have an extrude feature. I can select it and then right mouse click and hold. Let's choose pattern and I will turn on my datum plane display for a moment because I am going to create a direction pattern. As my reference, I will use this datum plane and I'm going to drag it out to a distance of 100. Let's create four instances. And then I can hit the check mark or the middle mouse button. Let's turn off our datum plane display. And so here I have four separated cylinders. Again, perfectly fine. They are not separate bodies, they are part of this Pro Engineer part. And for a third example, let me go to another part model. And here I have a part with a block that is extruded. Let's select this sketch. And once again, I will choose to extrude it. Let's flip the direction and I can change it to remove material. I'm going to change the depth to through all. Let's hit the check mark or middle mouse button. And so in this way, I've created a cut that divides that block into two separate pieces. Again, it doesn't create any different bodies. It's just the part and this is the way that it behaved. So that is the traditional historical behavior for Pro Engineer and Creo Parametric up until 7.0 was released in 2020. Let's take a look at doing these same operations in SOLIDWORKS. Okay, here I am in SOLIDWORKS and I have a sketch that consists of two different squares. Let's select the sketch and then choose to create an extrude. And we have the preview for the feature being created. We'll drag it out to the depth that we want, then hit the check mark from the property manager. And now we have our two blocks created. And if you take a look in our feature tree, excuse me, our feature manager design tree, we now have two solid bodies. We have our boss extrude one and then our boss extrude two. So by virtue of taking a sketch with separated entities, disjointed entities and extruding it, we end up with two different bodies. There are some interesting design techniques that you can incorporate using this. Also, if I right click on one of the bodies, we can have this be one particular material and then select the other body and assign a different material to this one. That way we have two different bodies with two different materials in the same part model. Also, you can go to insert and then features and we have our save bodies command. And you can save these as their own individual parts. So this is a way that you can sort of do what is skeleton modeling in Creo Parametric and Pro Engineer. All right, so in this part model, I have an extruded cylinder. Let's go to create a linear pattern. And the first thing is to define the direction for the pattern. 
and right now we are getting a distance of 100 for the spacing four different instances and then let's click in the collector for the features and faces to pattern i will select the boss extrude we can see the preview of what we're going to get oops jumping between software programs sometimes i screw up the manipulation on the screen so let's try hitting the check mark and when i do that you'll notice that we get a little warning sign next to the pattern in the model also we have an indication that there is an issue with this and so when i right click on the feature we can see in the warning it says hey some feature instances are disjoint and will not be created use the bodies option to mirror pattern distinct bodies okay let's try deleting this and we'll just delete the pattern feature let's hit the yes button and try that again let's choose linear pattern and then for the direction i will use the same reference same spacing same number of instances but rather than patterning features and faces i will choose bodies and then select this body as to what should be patterned then hit the check mark and this time it works if we expand the solid bodies feature hey we have the original boss extrude and then we have the three other members of the pattern all right let's hop over to our third model to take a look at the other example so we have a block in the model let's select our sketch and this time we're going to do an extruded cut not an extruded boss or base one other thing about solidworks is that it makes a distinction between whether a feature is adding or removing material for the depth let me change that to through all and then we can hit the check mark and here we get an option a dialog box it says hey which body should we keep all bodies or selected bodies by creating the slice that ends up in two disjointed blocks well it wants to know hey you're gonna going to end up with bodies or you can choose to get rid of one of the bodies let's choose all bodies to keep and now you can see in my bodies folder we have our cut extrude one and our cut extrude two so again three different situations that will end up creating multiple bodies inside of SOLIDWORKS if you have multiple closed loops in a sketch if you are trying to duplicate features via pattern or mirror in which the geometry will not be connected or if you create a cut that will end up in disjointed geometry all right now i'm going to jump over to creo parametric to take a look at creo's approach to the creation of bodies here i am in a part model that already has a couple of sketches in it just to speed up this process so let's say that i want to start creating some geometry to make it easier on myself i'm going to use the selection filter to change to sketch region and that way i can use the control key to select two different sketch regions and then extrude them and for the depth let me right click on the depth drag handle and change this to two reference and i'll just pick a line to create in the model if i go to the body options tab by default this geometry will be added to body one so starting in creo parametric 7.0 there is a default body in the model called body one and that is what solid geometry will be added to let's hit the check mark in order to complete that that is good and with sketch region still selected in my filter let's select a couple of these other two different regions and once again i will extrude and for the depth in this direction i will choose to reference and pick a surface and let's define a side two depth of also two reference and pick this other surface in the model if i go to body options right now this is going to be added to the same body let's let's do that i'm going to keep everything in body one and hit the check mark and so that way we have our body in here all right so now that we have our first body created let's take a look at how you can end up creating other additional bodies in the model 
So I will select a different sketch region and let's choose to do an extrude. And for this one, let's flip the direction of the feature and I'm going to define my first depth. Let's choose to reference and I'll choose this particular surface. And then I'm going to define a side two depth and let's also do this one to reference and I will select this same surface but if I go to the options tab, instead of going right to that surface, I can offset from that surface a certain distance. Let's do a distance of 20. And this time when I go to create this extrude, rather than having it added to body one, I can choose to create a new body. So when I'm creating a new feature that adds geometry to the model, I can create a brand new body. And just to make these look different, let me select body one and then choose to make this one transparent. And so that way, if I go to the view tab, now in Creo 8, we have four solid bodies that are marked as transparent. We can control how visible or invisible that they are. So let me just amp this up a little bit. And so that way you can see that these two different bodies are different. And also, if you take a look in the bodies folder, we now have a star indicating that body two is essentially the active body, the default body. So if I create any other new geometry, it will go into that body. So when you are creating a feature, that is one way in which you can create a new body. Another way, here we have the new body command. So I will choose new body and you can change the name. I will accept the default name. So here we have body three. The icon indicates that there is no solid geometry in here yet. And so for body three, then I can say, hey, let's select say this particular sketch region and I will extrude this one. And for the depth, let me right click. Oops, got the flip right now. They're right on top of each other. Let me zoom in a little bit and let's change this to symmetric and then grab a drag handle and just make this bar a lot bigger. And so this will end up going into body three when we hit the check mark. And so now we have a third body in the model. Let me just make that a different color in order to distinguish it. Just grab the first color that I see and apply to that. So there we have a third body created in the model. Another way in which you can end up creating bodies in Creo Parametric is when you are performing data sharing operations like copy geometry or shrink wrap or merge or inheritance. For example, let me create a copy geometry feature. This one will be external. I will hit the open button and let me grab a part that I already have in session. Let's locate this using a coordinate system and I have another coordinate system in the part. Let's click OK and I will activate the bodies collector and just grab the body of geometry from this particular part. Let's hit the check mark. And so that way, by bringing in the geometry from a fastener, here we have body four. You'll notice that body three is still the default body. So if I were to create any new solid features, they would go into body three, not body four, this fastener that I brought in. Hey, let's rename this just so that we know that this is the fastener, just to keep track of it. And now with that fastener, I can select that. And let's say I want to create a pattern and let's create a direction pattern. I'll just pick a surface here in the model and let's grab this. Oops, let me use that flip. Everything's really small on the screen and just grab and drag out some distance and let's just plug in some number for the instances and hit the check mark and so now we are patterning that and if I take a look inside of the bodies folder now we have a pattern of bodies and so by patterning this body we ended up with four other additional bodies in the model. So there are five different ways that we just took a look at in which you can end up creating 
bodies inside of a model. You can do that by selecting to create a new body when you're creating a new feature. You can do it by the new body command. Oh wait, there's one other way that I forgot to show you. Let me turn on my datum plane display for this particular plane. It was hidden in the model tree. So you can use the split body command. So for example, I can choose for the body to split. Let's say I want to split this body and for the splitting object, I can use this particular plane and we are then going to end up hitting the check mark. And so by using the split body, here I have body eight. And if I take a look, this should be body two over here. So split body is another way in which you can end up with multiple bodies in your model. And as we also saw the copy geometry feature and also the pattern feature is a way of creating other additional bodies in a model. By the way, let me edit definition. I think I accidentally turned off one of the preview dots. Let's turn it back on. There we go. Now we have a pattern of five bodies here in the model. So again, that's the fundamental difference between bodies in SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametric. In SOLIDWORKS, when you end up with disjointed geometry, you have new bodies and you have a variety of different creation methods for generating new bodies inside of Creo Parametric. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are created. Thank you very much.